When there's an offense, there needs to be some kind of payment for that. And so we're taking that offense and giving that over to God to deal with. And we are relinquishing our right to demand payment for that debt. Welcome to Practicing the Practices. This is an experiential podcast where we not only want to help you learn about the way of Jesus, we want to help you practice the way of Jesus in your everyday life. Well, it's Brad here with Casey, and we're back for another episode of Practicing the Practices, episode 213. And today, Casey, we're talking about forgiveness. And let me start by offering you forgiveness. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what are you forgiving me for? Uh, I'll, I'll come up with it by the end of the okay, episode. Okay, got it, got it. So we have been talking about uh, the practices of a healthy quinonia. If you're just joining us, if you've been with us, you're like, Brad, don't explain it one more time. If you're <laughs> just joining us, it is essentially how followers of Jesus relate to one another in a Jesus community. And forgiveness is one of the most essential elements to being a follower of Jesus, to being an apprentice of Jesus. Casey, forgiveness plays a crucial role in our journey of being with Jesus, becoming like Jesus, doing the things Jesus did. Our world, the real world we live in, is tainted by sin and shame. Relationships are frequently marred by hurt, betrayal, and sorrow. Throughout the scripture, God's word urges us to let go of our desire to hold others accountable for their wrongs against us. And nowhere is this practice, the practice of forgiveness, better exemplified than in the life of Jesus, who when faced with sin didn't ignore the sin, nor did Jesus seek revenge, but he chose a profound path of grace, and that's the path of forgiveness. Yeah, I think this is a practice that we do once in a while when something really bad happens. You know, we think, oh, I've got to forgive so-and-so. They really wronged me. But today I really want and hope that we can consider what a regular practice of forgiveness looks like as opposed to just once in a while when something really horrible happens, practicing forgiveness, which is important. This became a part of my life, or I became on my radar. A couple years back, I was doing this prayer app that had the Lord's Prayer every single day, Mm. multiple times a day. And it caused me every day to consider that peace as I was meditatively praying through the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And you know, at first I think of like the big things in my life that require forgiveness, that I need forgiveness for, and that I want to offer forgiveness for. But after a couple Mm -hmm. times a day, every day for months, big thing or little things, I guess I should say, kept coming out of that. Like, oh, I never really extended forgiveness. I've still been holding on Mm -hmm. to that little slight from someone from a long time ago. And it really was a really transformative practice for me to have a regular practice of forgiveness, to check in regularly. Like, Lord, who am I harboring bitterness and grudges Mm -hmm. against that I'm not even really aware of it? Jan Richardson says, forgiveness might well be the hardest blessing we will ever offer or receive. As with any difficult practice, it's important to ask not only for the strength we will need for it, but also for the grace. The grace that will, as we practice again and again, begin to shimmer through our wounds, drawing us toward the healing and freedom we could hardly have imagined at the out, at the outset. And I think what's really important to note as we start this journey of forgiveness, of the practice of forgiveness, is that this is a spiritual work. Sometimes all we Mm. really offer is our willingness to engage in this. And part of this practice, like any practice, is the spirit taking our willingness Mm -hmm. and doing something that we couldn't do on our own with it. Yeah. in In a few moments, we'll touch on the necessary of the supernatural to be at play, particularly in some of those major areas of forgiveness Mm -hmm. where we've been really wronged in some significant ways. But I think you bring up a good point that honestly I hadn't even thought of in approaching this episode is that we can collect a thousand tiny resentments Mm -hmm. that form large bitternesses 
dispositions towards other people. We write people off. And, and because they haven't slandered us in some dramatic way, cheated on us, you know, stole our car or whatever, embezzled money from us, we, we actually treat them as if they have, you know, emotionally, internally, maybe even dispositionally, because we haven't done the work of small forgiveness. So I'd love to think about pressing into that as we go. And so to get started, much as we did with the practice of confession and repentance, we really need to define what forgiveness is accurately. Yeah, I think this, like many of our practices, the definition has gotten kind of skewed and muddled over Mm -hmm. the years because we don't take time to intentionally define it. Just like you were saying, we don't really think of this as a regular small practice. We think of this as only a practice for the big things. But like any practice, the more we do it in the small daily ways, the much more natural. I'm not going to say easier, but the much more natural it becomes in the bigger things. So the more you practice daily forgiveness for the little slights of life, it'll be much more natural for you to practice it when the big hurts come your way. And so it is really important to define what is this that we're talking about? Because a lot of times forgiveness, we just think it's just saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's not the same as asking for forgiveness. Yeah. And it's not just saying, oh, that's no big deal when somebody mm-hmm. apologizes to you. Oh, yeah, no big deal. That's no big deal. Forgiveness is not saying... There's a lot of things that we're not saying when we say, I forgive you. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like, what, I think one of the challenges in helping people think about forgiveness and practice forgiveness is when you think about repentance we might have like created this massive concept of repentance, which actually keeps people from repenting. Hmm. I I think maybe we've done the opposite with forgiveness is we've minimized it in some ways, made it small. Like you said, tell your sister you're sorry. That's not seeking forgiveness. Um, It's not even feeling bad. And then when somebody does try to forgive, if we downplay it, we're actually discrediting the injustice in the practice of mercy, which is what where forgiveness meets. There is an injustice, there's a wrong, there's an offense, there's a slight, there's a sin against, and justice demands that it be made right. And of course, we live in the kingdom of God, and there's grace and gospel for that, but it's not passive, it's active. And so when we diminish wrongdoing, we actually unintentionally diminish the gift of mercy. If you want mercy in your life, there also has to be justice, right? And God God brings both of those together. So let's really kind of press in. Help us, give us a little bit of a definition of forgiveness, and then we'll parse it out with kind of some, some maybe some common misnomers about forgiveness. Yeah, so the definition of forgiveness is essentially the act of pardoning an offender. The root word of forgive is actually the Latin word. I'm going to see, hopefully I get this right. Hopefully I pronounce this well. You've got it. Perdonare. That's impressive. Meaning to give completely without reservation. And this is where we get our English word pardon. So we're pardoning an offender. Like you said, when there's an offense, there needs to be some kind of payment for that. And so we're taking that offense and giving that over to God to deal with. And we are relinquishing our right to demand payment for that debt. We're going to literally let that go and not demanding a repayment for the debt, giving that over to God to take care of. One of the common misnomers I think about forgiveness is that you need to get to a place in your life where you feel it. Right. Or that you think the other person is worthy of it, right? So what we're saying is, is forgiveness is means that if I, if I forgive you for some offense, is that I am no longer going to hold that wrongdoing against you. Right. Now, if you've violated my trust in some major way, as we'll see, that doesn't necessarily mean a reset of trust. So let's talk a little bit about what forgiveness isn't. Here's the first thing that we've, we've said, is forgiveness is not saying that what happened was okay. Yeah, it's not saying that it didn't cause damage. It's not saying there aren't consequences for actions. Right. Forgiveness is just releasing our stake in the matter, but it's 
And it's about freedom from the toxicity of something so powerful that Mm. only God can properly deal with it. But it isn't just saying it's okay. And, you know, that's something I catch myself and I kind of have over the years told my kids, don't say it's okay. Say, I forgive you because it wasn't okay. If your sister hit you, that wasn't okay to, you know, we don't want to give that message that when people wrong us, that that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's not okay, but it's forgiven. There's a freedom that comes. Mm -hmm. I'm freeing you and releasing you from me holding this grudge against you any longer, but it wasn't okay. And I think a big part as we practice in next episode, little foreshadowing here is it's a really important part of the process of forgiveness is to actually say in some way, whether we're journaling, saying to the person, talking to God, this happened and this was not okay. Yeah. And in the context of relationships, a second thing is, is forgiveness doesn't mean that we don't set wise boundaries, especially if what was done against us was, you know, abusive or harmful. Like, you know, you know, you might say, Brad, this is you're this is you're fostering some sort of toxic trauma thing to suggest that if somebody's really been harmed, that they should offer forgiveness and, you know, wipe the slate clean. Again, that's the misunderstanding of forgiveness. Uh, boundaries, you say, Casey, are healthy. And if someone has been abusive, cruel, you know, particularly hurtful, uh, you can forgive, not hold that fence against them, not become vindictive, not seek vengeance, and at the same time say, "Hey, I, I'm going to create a boundary here. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, there's a trust that has to be re-earned, and so I'm not going to put my position." Uh, put myself in a position to get hurt or wounded again. Yeah, that's really important. And the purpose of boundaries is not so much to keep people away, but to set a healthy level of how close people can come in. And there's nothing sinful or wrong about setting those boundaries. We can we can kind of push our fence back out a little bit with people that have hurt us, and they can still come up to the fence, and they can still be in relationship with us to whatever feels safe, emotionally appropriate, but our boundaries are really important. And I think sometimes in my experience in the church, boundaries are kind of seen as a lack of forgiveness. And yeah. I, we really want to say that that boundaries are not a lack of forgiveness. They're a healthy thing that we need with people who have repeatedly hurt us. Yeah. We, we can't dismiss the book of Proverbs, right? So we are big and pro authenticity, transparency, vulnerability. It gets a lot of action today in our mm-hmm. world, you know, books, Brene Brown, et cetera, et cetera. But we have a responsibility to be wise in who we're vulnerable to, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to be max vulnerable to the whole world. It's just totally inappropriate or unwise. That's going to be a small group of people. So forgiveness isn't some sort of wide open gate. Hey, you can get away with anything. Uh, a third thing is for, uh, back to that emotional piece, forgiveness doesn't mean that we have to feel a certain way towards another person, right? It, it's not about emotionally coming to terms and feeling good about something. Yeah. We might feel really still upset and angry and hurt at someone, or we might not feel all the warm, fuzzies, loving feelings towards them, but that doesn't mean we can't practice forgiveness with them. We can't measure our ability to forgive based on how we feel about the person. Jesus commanded us to forgive, and so the act of forgiving is a choice. It's an act of our will. It's an obedience that we submit to, and like I said, sometimes for me, this looks like, Jesus, I'm willing to forgive I'm willing to forgive this person. I don't even know how to make that happen in my heart, but I am willing to daily lay down my need for revenge and offer a take your offer and your invitation of forgiveness. So feelings are not the measure of whether we're forgiving. Of course, sometimes we might have feelings of goodwill and release over time with someone, but feeling good about a situation or the person, it's not really the point. Releasing the person, the burden and the toxicity it places on us into the capable hands of God is what we're looking for. And this is probably a good time to segue to that supernatural piece. This is one of the things that makes the practice of forgiveness uniquely Christian unique in the Christian ethic, because it makes no logical, rational sense not to demand justice and revenge without the Christian ethic. 
of who Jesus is. And so frankly, to practice forgiveness will require divine help. We will need divine, supernatural grace, unexpected power from God. And one of the great illustrations that comes to mind is Corey ten Boom. So if you're not familiar with that story, in let me give you the 60-second version, but here you have a a woman, you know, during the the Nazi raid of Poland and Holland and, and Europe who with along with her family are captured and put in concentration camps and who ex- experience abuse from the, her captors, her guards, sees her father and her sister die in that scenario, uh, survives. Uh, gets released through the liberation of those camps, and later on, uh, you know, just has this you know supernatural work of the Lord in her life, and begins to to teach and tell her story. And she's at one of these rallies where she is, you know, teaching, and she recognizes a man make his way forward after the event, and recognizes this was one of my captors. This is one of my oppressors. This is one of these men who abused us. Mm -hmm. And he comes to her and describes in in the aftermath of Nazi Germany and all the things of finding Jesus and asks her for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And if you go and read her account, she describes it this way, and this is a paraphrase, it won't be verbatim, but she describes that nothing in her body or spirit wanted to forgive, Mm -hmm. but she knew it was the way of Jesus to be obedient in this moment. And so she describes it this way, woodenly, mechanically, Mm -hmm. I reached out my hand and said, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. And then she describes like in that moment, it was like a dr- the dramatic presence of God came over and supernaturally did in me to release this man from his wounds against me, something that I couldn't do. And so that's what we're talking about. There will be times where it will not just be some sort of pragmatic thing to make our lives better. It will require the deep work of God in us. So before we talk about practicing forgiveness... Let's say just a word about the spiritual preparation that's oftentimes necessary to give forgiveness when we've been wrong. Yeah, we definitely need to come into this process and really ask the Spirit to be a part of it. This isn't something we can muscle through. It is an Mm. act of obedience. And like how you said, she kind of almost woodenly just went through the motions, but there is, we can, we can take the step of obedience, but the spirit also is going to do a work in us that we can't do on our own. So it's important to get honest with the Lord and maybe a trusted friend or a spiritual mentor and just say, I'm holding a grudge against this Mm. person. I'm angry at this person. I hate this person. Whatever it is, radical honesty with the Lord to share what's going on in you. And I think what this person did was wrong is also part of that honesty. And then asking for grace and strength to walk in the obedience in the way of Jesus who gave the ultimate act of forgiveness when he asked God to forgive those people that were torturing him and putting him to death. So Jesus is not asking us to do anything that he hasn't already mm. done himself here. And then remind remind yourself of your own need for grace and your own experience with grace. So remembering all of the times I've required forgiveness, all of the ways I've been forgiven and received mm. grace will help get my heart in the right posture to extend that to other people. So, Casey, with the principle of forgiveness established, let's close our time out as we always do, thinking about how we can practice forgiveness. Yeah, so we're going to have two episodes on forgiveness at least. So we're just going to start the practice today by just starting to ask the Spirit to reveal places of unforgiveness in our own heart. And then we'll actually, next episode, go through more of the practical steps of practicing forgiveness. So today, we're just going to start to ask the Spirit to reveal 
places in our life where we're holding grudges, bitterness, and resentment that we maybe aren't even aware of. So just take a couple moments to take some deep breaths, to quiet your racing mind, feel your feet on the floor, asking for the volume of the Spirit's voice to be turned up so that you can really hear what it is God wants to show you and say to you today. And just start to pray, Holy Spirit, what grudges might I be holding on to? Maybe I'm aware of them, maybe I'm not. Will you reveal to me what grudges I might be holding on to? And you can always pause if you need more time to reflect. Holy Spirit, in what situations in my life do I not want to let go of feelings of revenge or hatred? Will you give me clarity as to where I'm clinging on to those feelings? will you show me who do I avoid or neglect because they've hurt me? And maybe through these questions, one or more people have surfaced, have come up for you. Is there one particular of those that the Spirit wants to start with in your heart? And just asking Jesus to give you a vision of what it would look like to invite Jesus into this space of hurt and to invite him to forgive through you. be the instrument of Jesus's grace in the life of this person, whether they realize it or not. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Practicing the Practices. Go ahead and subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. If you don't mind, leave us a review. Reviews help more people engage with the podcast and as a result, encounter the way of Jesus. Until next time, grace and peace.